Good morning. Hope everybody had a decent weekend. I enjoyed my time at the range doing my little drills, trying to get some muscle memory and get my fat ass out there and do stuff. Oh, got my patch wall showed up. I need a lot more patches, man. <laughs> nice. So it's it's been a weird 24 hours because I posted a few things on Reddit in the B&T subreddit about this thing with the B&T, right? So essentially... Um, my initial perception was that something's out of spec because of how freely those pins flow through that trigger. Now, I, I've now come to understand that when they Hey! Would you stop it? I've now come to understand that, uh, essentially, well, I mean, all the brand sims have fucking come out for blood. Let's put it that way. All the brand sims have fucking come out for blood. Which is ironic, because if, instead of the letters B and T being the firearm that basically, with less than 200 rounds, during live fire, pins flew out and it started to burst fire on its own. Which is, to me, as somebody new to cassette triggers and to B and D, to me, that's a big fucking problem, alright? A brand new gun from the factory that costs almost three thousand dollars, with less than two hundred rounds on it, failed for whatever reason. The pins came loose, and then instead of the design point of the failure, when the geometry changed when that pin flew out, the design should be, in my mind, if that pin falls out, it should basically not be able to fire at all. But instead, it defaulted to let's burst fire for every single fucking trigger pull. Which is beyond unsafe, but let's forget that for a moment. Because it's B and T and not PSA, the brand sims are losing their fucking minds. How dare I criticize their beloved B and T stuff, right? Or their fucking Elfman triggers. They oh, I've had I got a bunch of these in my gun. They ran perfect. I don't, you're you're obviously a fucking idiot. All right, look, I'm willing to accept the fact that I've never used a cassette trigger before in my life. Since I first started with the Anderson and, and on forward, every group I was in that I even asked about or saw people ask about cassette triggers, the overwhelming majority of, of dudes basically said, don't fuck with cassette triggers, they're unreliable and they're trash. Okay. Well, whether that's a properly founded argument or not, I don't know. But I kind of said, okay, I'll stick with regular triggers. And I've never had this issue happen. And all the 14, 15 plus ARs that I've built in the last three and a half years, once they were finally assembled and tested and ran, I've never had a trigger pin come flying out the gun, especially during live fire. I've never had a, a, a standard trigger, whether it's a Geisley or a, a BCM trigger or a Sons of Liberty trigger. I've never had a single one of them have a pin fly out during live fire. Uh, and result in an unsafe burst fire reaction to a, um, a single pull, right? That's never happened. So that's why I was blown away when, when this happened. I was safe. I was pointed at the berm with 10 yards. So uh, it's not like it was a situation where anybody was put in jeopardy. But there is the potential for that. So obviously I was concerned. So I posted about it both to verify what's going on with this and to and to also toss a heads up to anybody else who bought a BNT Limited APC-9 that also maybe has never used a cassette trigger, that this is a possible outcome that could happen to them. So that was my logic. So for 24 hours, I've had every brand simp for BNT and Elfman coming out of the woodwork just trying to annihilate me. My question to them is, if this were PSA, or some other sub-tier brand, Strybog, Scorpion, they would be all over it. Piece of shit, QC, I told you. But because it's their beloved B&T, and their beloved Elfman, I'm the idiot. I'm the one who should have known that with a brand new $3,000 almost gun, I should know that I have to constantly double-check the set screw tension on the trigger before engaging and firing the weapon. Which blows my fucking mind. It's like, really? You know, I don't have to do that with Geisleys. Once I know they're set up and I take them out, 
They're good. When I go to grab that weapon in the middle of the night, when some fucking douchebag wants to kick down my door, I don't have to think, when's the last time I fucking set the tension on the set screws and the trigger? Is it going to work? Is it going to... I don't know. I don't have to do that with those. Obviously, I do with the Elfman, which is ridiculous. So from somebody with the mindset of just using standard triggers, and this being my first experience with one, and having had this happen... I still scratch my head, going, why should I have to remember and constantly recheck tension on set screws that control the pressure applied to a pin that, if it falls out, obviously can result in very dangerous safety and functionality issues with the gun. It's not like it's, well, the pin fell out, so now it refuses to fire. The pin fell out, and now it's shooting multi-round burst with a, a single fucking trigger pull. That's a design flaw. I hate to tell you. That's not good. Now, as far as whose design flaw it is, I'd say it's uh, probably both uh, freaking companies. You know, here's a standard trigger pin for ARs. It's not as long as the one that goes in. These holes are way oversized. So that just falls right through, right? In my mind, B&T should have designed it where this hole has a little smaller so that as a secondary means of security protocol, given the fact that this can happen, there should be a little tension there. Now, if you want to supplement that with the set screw tension, that's fine. So if those set screws come loose, you still it still probably won't come flying out of the damn gun. And if it does fly out of the damn gun, then we turn to a design flaw with the Elfman trigger. With the Elfman trigger, the, uh, it should probably be redesigned so that when the geometry changes, if and when a pin does fall out, it can't rapid fire. It can't burst fire. That's dangerous. That's uncontrollable danger right there. If anything, it should not be able to fire at all. As a layman and somebody who's just looking at it for the first time, having experienced this, to me, those two issues would be very smart upgrades to the redesign of any future products. Make the holes for the pins slightly smaller so that there's a little bit of natural tension. You can still move freely, but just create a little bit more tension in there so it just can't fall right out. And as far as the Elfman goes, if a pin does fall out and that geometry does change, perhaps it should be redesigned so that it can't fire at all. You pull the trigger, nothing happens. As opposed to, the pin fell out, I just pulled the trigger, let's fire two, three rounds. Because fuck it. Uh, so that's where I am on this one. But the brand simps are coming out full bore, trying to go after my ass. I'm like, you know what, no, no, fuck you. Fuck you. I know I'm right here. Because I'm sure there's plenty of other guys that are buying these B&Ts with that Elfman upgrade. And when they get it, they're not immediately... I mean, it's not like you, I, I opened the, the gun bag after getting it, and there was a big red piece of paper from Elfman saying, Caution, please recheck tension on set screws. Otherwise, the pin might fall out, and the gun could burst fire. If, that, if there had been something like that, I'd say, Oh, okay, cool. I'll go in and check the tension. Well, I'm not seeing any residual blue, so I don't see any Loctite being used here. Unless it's somewhere else inside the uh, trigger mechanism on the set screw. However, I do see the two indentations of the set screws that ate through the Cerakote and is showing bare uh, friggin' metal. So, to me, that tells me B&T and their armorers probably do know what they're doing. And they did torque the fuck out of those things that probably to the spec that's required... But less than 200 rounds, they still came loose. So I guess my, my overall point here is that the gun shouldn't do that. And that trigger shouldn't do that. And when you're spending close to $3,000 for a, a Gucci tier gun, uh... It should be held to higher standards than your P90 
PSAs or your other brands that these guys shit on day after day in the groups. When somebody has a problem with them, it's of course you did. It's a piece of shit PSA. You're a fucking poor. You're an idiot. You should have known better. But if an issue happens with one of these or a CAC, it's the user's fault. Don't, how dare you disparage the, the almighty name of BNT or Knight's Armament or, or anything else. And that hypocrisy is what pisses me the fuck off. So, that's where we are. I emailed BNT. I emailed Elfman. The flip side of that coin is now after doing another deep dive, I, I get that those once that's in, the gun, and you do adjust that tension and it torques down... Those pins do get a little more stiff. So that's cool. I, I, I get that. So apologies for not understanding that originally. At the same time, that's not enough. There should be a secondary protocol for tension that uh, negates that from possibly happening. So we have a perfect storm of issues. I think the holes are oversized on, on the pin holes on the B&T. I think they should be slightly smaller so that there's a little bit of natural tension. And then the set screws on the trigger tech can act as a secondary means of tension. I don't see any use of Loctite unless um, it's, it's elsewhere, but you would think the Loctite would be in the receiver on the connection so that it can't spin. The recoil is only 9mm. I, I assume their 308s, 223s also have this problem? I don't know. This is the aluminum one versus the polymer. Maybe the metal on metal contact, as somebody, I think Paul Cooper explained, the vibration with all the metal and the recoil can sometimes undo those. And you have to... I don't want to have to keep checking tension on set screws on a trigger on a firearm that I may use to defend my life or the ones that I care about. You know, I don't check the tension on these. My trigger pins on the ARs, are, are they're in there. They're set. And if they do start to walk out, it's obvious. But it's there. You can correct it. They, they pop out a tiny bit. They don't come flying out of the gun during live fire. And that's what's had me scratching my head. But the, the mere mention of the issue, I'm getting attacked for being a stupid fucking noob. What the hell's wrong with you? You're making too much of a big deal out of this? Like, no, I'm not really, dude. And that's, I finally got rid of my... my, my Low tier Strybog and Scorpion and the cheaper shit that guys fuck raked me over the coals for buying. And so you need to get some quality B and T. Bought one, less than two hundred rounds. Failure. And it's still my fault because I didn't keep a log in a journal to see exactly how often every week I'm retensioning the screws on a fucking trigger. Blow me. Not gonna not gonna eat that. Sorry. So we'll see what happens, but you know what? The hypocrisy is just unbelievable. That's my story on this one. I'm just pissed off right now. Peace.